President Trump's gut, his gut, tells him more than anybody else's brain. That is just one of several new declarations by the president in a wide-ranging interview with The Washington Post. In addition to stressing his high level of intelligence on climate change, the president also weighed in on the economy, including the recent declines in the stock market and GM's announcement to lay off thousands of workers and close multiple plants. The president points his finger squarely at the man he chose to lead the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, calling the Fed his biggest threat, saying, quote, I'm not blaming anybody, but I will tell you, at this moment in time, I am not happy at all with the Fed. I am not at all happy with my choice. I think we have to let it go. You know, if you look at it, China is being accommodative. The euro in Europe is being accommodative. We're not getting any accommodation. And we're also paying $50 billion. We're paying down our liquidity. Is You can make the case it's a positive thing in one way, but another thing, it snaps your liquidity. So I'm doing deals, and I'm not being accommodated by the Fed. I'm not happy with the Fed. They're making a mistake because I have a gut. And my gut tells me more sometimes than anybody else's brain ever can tell me. I'd like to remind our audience that it is that same gut that the president had that went bankrupt more than four times. And I'm just going to speak personally. When I listen to my gut, what I usually hear is gas. Joining me now is one of the Washington Post reporters who is there conducting this interview with the president. This is the White House bureau chief from the Post. He's an MSNBC political analyst, Phil Rucker. Phil, I'm going to steal a line from Jim Cramer a couple of days ago. We've gone from the art of the deal to the art of incoherence. You repeatedly asked him about the economy. Who should be responsible for the economy? You reminded the president that Harry Truman had a sign on his desk that read the buck stops here. Did the president take any personal responsibility? No, Steph, he took no personal responsibility. In fact, he wouldn't even really engage uh, that question about Harry Truman saying the buck stops here. Instead, he pointed his finger at Jerome Powell, the, the Federal Reserve chairman. This was President Trump's hand-selected nominee to run the central bank. But Trump said that Powell is responsible for any softening in the economy. He points to the raises in interest rates uh, at the Fed. Uh, Trump was careful to say he does not think there'll be a recession, but that he thinks anything wrong with the economy anywhere is squarely the, the Fed's fault. But did he acknowledge he's complaining that interest rates are going up? In the last administration, when interest rates were very low, he blamed Janet Yellen, saying she was rigging the system. So did he acknowledge that he once had an issue with low rates? He, he did not. Uh, you know, he, he said, look, the one of the reasons that the economy is having these cracks is because his trade deals are taking too long uh, to, to bear fruit. That he said, give it a little bit of time, be a little patient uh, with these trade deals. He's busy doing trade deals, uh, but he's not getting the kind of backing that he needs from the Fed. He's very disappointed in Powell. In fact, he said, I'm not even a little bit happy with his choice of Jay, uh, Jay being Jerome Powell. Well, he also said that Janet Yellen was, what, too short for the job. I don't know if she stood on her degree right. from Brown, her PhD from, from Yale, and maybe to the time she was teaching at the London School of Economics and at Harvard, that would put her at about seven feet tall. All right, you asked the president about a meeting with Putin at the G20 meeting that's going to take yeah. place in Argentina, and he said this, quote, maybe I won't have the meeting. Maybe I won't even have the meeting. We're going to see. He then said this about Russia seizing those Ukrainian ships. He said, I don't like that aggression. I don't like that aggression at all. Absolutely. And by the way, Europe shouldn't like that aggression. And Germany shouldn't like that aggression. You know, they're paying 1%, and they're supposed to be paying much more than 1%. Walk us through how you interpret this, and hopefully you weren't playing a drinking game that meant you had to take a shot every time you said aggression. There was no drinking game, although he had that Diet Coke at his desk. But uh, anyhow, I, I was actually a little bit surprised by what he had to say about Putin, because Trump has been so reluctant, as you know, Steph, to criticize Vladimir Putin. In fact, he's complimented his leadership, complimented his strength, complimented some of his military moves. Uh, and yet he said he did not like the aggression that he saw in the Black Sea over the weekend. He was awaiting a briefing from his national security team that was supposed to happen last night. And after that briefing, he was going to decide whether to go ahead with the planned meeting with Putin later this week in Argentina at the G20 summit or to cancel it all together. He's facing some pressure uh, here in Washington to cancel that meeting as a show of condemnation for what Russia is doing. Although I have to tell you, I'd be surprised if he gave up the chance to meet with Putin, just knowing how much he, uh, he thinks that relationship is important for his presidency and for the country.
Uh, you also talked to him about climate change. I couldn't yeah. even understand any of it. You walk me through what he said. Well, uh, good luck understanding all of it. He had a lot of thoughts on climate change. We, we have the whole uh, transcript at WashingtonPost.com. And, and look, the, he took issue with the climate report uh, that his, his, administration report issued his administration issued last week. Yeah, he said, look, I'm not, I don't see that, that climate change, global warming is man-made. He doesn't believe that scientific consensus. He also said, uh, he took issue with the findings, the predictions that global warming would have long-term uh, economic uh, harm in the United States. And he said, look, there are, a lot, uh, there are a lot of smart, intelligent people like me who are not, and this is his words, uh, who are not believers in did climate he cite, change. So though, he was very much of a skeptic. Did he cite why he believes that? Because the report that came came out Friday uh, was from scientists and I know the president urged you that he relies on that smart gut of his but in terms of climate why is it that he doesn't believe well, he, he had a whole answer about going from the forest fires in California, not being raked, to uh, pollution coming over from Asia, drifting through the Pacific Ocean into the United States, and all sorts of other reasons. But he said, look, he doesn't think uh, that the atmosphere is, is changing as rapidly as the science would show. And he doesn't, he's not convinced that it's caused by man, that it's pollution uh, from, from man uh, that is creating the, the, the warming of of the temperatures around the world. He's simply not on board uh, with the findings of the government and, frankly, with the consensus within the scientific community. So you were not alone in the room with the president. Some members of his team were there, Bill Shine, Kellyanne Conway, Sarah Sanders. Were they nodding approvingly of the president when he was saying this stuff? Well, you know, they were there observing the interview, and, and they certainly were uh, sort of in agreement with what he was saying, but they let him do the interview. He, they actually didn't interject at all, except for one sort of aside that Kellyanne Conway made at the very end of the interview. About what? Uh, regar uh, regarding the, the Mueller investigation. Trump said, you know, we asked Trump, will you uh, commit here and now to allow Robert Mueller to continue this Russia investigation until its natural conclusion? And Trump sort of laughed and said, that question's been asked, you know, many, many times over the last two years, and Kellyanne jumped in and said a thousand times, sort of as a joke uh, that he keeps being asked that. But he would not commit to, to letting Mueller continue the investigation. He said, I have no intention of ending the investigation now or taking that sort of action now, but he would not commit to letting this go to its conclusion. My goodness, it was some interview, Phil. Thank you so much. If people haven't Thanks seen so it yet... Steph. Uh, you got to check the full transcript out. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.